Did you know that a small shift in pH can completely stop your plants from absorbing nutrients, no matter how much fertiliser you add? Or that your plants could be thriving one day and stunted the next, all because of pH? In the next few minutes, we'll show you why pH is so important in hydroponics and how mastering it can unlock explosive growth and higher yields in your system. Stick around because we are not just going to explain pH, we are going to show you exactly how it controls nutrient availability, how to measure and adjust it like a pro, and how to avoid common mistakes that kill hydroponic systems. By the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to master pH management and take your hydroponic system to the next level, whether you're growing leafy greens, strawberries or tomatoes. So let's dive in and unlock the full potential of your plants. First, what is pH? Simply put, pH measures how acidic or alkaline a solution is, on a scale from 0 to 14. A pH of 7 is neutral, like pure water. Below 7 is acidic, think lemon juice. Above 7 is alkaline, like baking soda. In hydroponics, pH matters because it directly affects how plants absorb nutrients. Here's the science. pH measures the concentration of hydrogen ions in your solution. More hydrogen ions mean a lower, more acidic pH, while fewer hydrogen ions mean a higher, more alkaline pH. In hydroponics, we rely entirely on nutrient solutions to deliver everything plants need. Unlike soil, which can buffer pH swings, hydroponic systems are highly sensitive to pH changes. The sweet spot for most crops is a range between 5.5 and 6.5. This slightly acidic range ensures maximum nutrient availability and absorption. Why is this range so critical? Nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the essential macronutrients, are most available in this range. If your pH drifts outside of 5.5 to 6.5, certain nutrients can become locked out, meaning your plants can't absorb them even if they're present in the solution. The pH level of your nutrient solution directly affects how well plants can absorb nutrients. Here's the science. Macronutrients like nitrogen, N, phosphorus, P, and potassium, K, are most available between 5.5 and 6.5. For example, nitrogen, an essential component for leafy growth, is absorbed as nitrate, NO3, and ammonium, nh 4 p However, nitrification, where ammonium converts to nitrate, slows down below pH 5.4, making nitrogen less available. Phosphorus, critical for root development, becomes unavailable below pH 6 because it forms insoluble compounds. Potassium remains stable across a wide range, but interacts with other cations in the solution, so maintaining balance is key. Micronutrients like iron, Fe, zinc, Zn, and manganese, Mn, are more available in acidic conditions. Iron, for example, becomes insoluble at neutral or alkaline pH, leading to deficiency symptoms like yellowing leaves, even if there's plenty of iron in the solution. Zinc availability drops significantly as pH rises, while manganese follows a similar pattern. Both are crucial for enzyme function and photosynthesis. Different plants have slightly different pH needs. Leafy greens like lettuce and spinach thrive in the 5.5 to 6.5 range. Fruiting vegetables like tomatoes and peppers prefer 5.8 to 6.5. Knowing your crop's preferences will help you fine-tune your pH for optimal growth. Now let's talk about how to measure pH. There are several tools you can use. pH test strips. These are cheap and easy, but not very precise. Liquid test kits. A step up in accuracy, but they require careful handling. Digital pH meters. The gold standard for serious growers. They're precise, reliable and easy to use, but they need regular calibration and maintenance. Using a digital pH meter is simple. Dip the probe into your solution. Wait for the reading to stabilize. If it's out of range, it's time to adjust. But remember, always calibrate your meter weekly using buffer solutions to ensure accuracy. So, what do you do if your pH is off? If it's too high, you'll need to lower it with an acid. 
popular options include phosphoric acid or a commercial pH down product. If it's too low, raise it with a base like potassium hydroxide or a pH up solution. Always adjust pH gradually. Add small amounts, mix thoroughly and test again before adding more. Overshooting can stress your plants and waste your time. Consistency is key. pH can fluctuate over time as plants absorb nutrients and release waste into the solution. That's why daily monitoring is crucial. Keep a log of your pH readings and any adjustments you make. This will help you spot trends and prevent issues before they become serious. Not managing pH properly can lead to all kinds of problems. Low pH, acidic, can cause root damage, nutrient toxicity, like too much iron or manganese, and reduced photosynthesis. High pH, alkaline, can cause nutrient deficiencies, especially for iron and zinc. Symptoms to watch for include yellowing leaves, chlorosis, stunted growth, and poor fruit development. If you see these, check your pH immediately. For larger or commercial systems, consider investing in an automated pH controller. These devices continuously monitor your pH and add acids or bases as needed to keep everything balanced. It's a great way to save time and ensure consistency. In summary, here are the best practices for pH management in hydroponics. Monitor daily. Use a reliable pH meter and test consistently. Maintain 5.5 to 6.5. Know your crop's preferences and stick to this range. Adjust gradually. Use pH up or down products in small amounts. Log your readings, spot trends and prevent future issues. Invest in quality tools. Calibrate your pH meter regularly and use clean water to avoid fluctuations. When you get pH right, you're setting the stage for healthier plants, better nutrient absorption and higher yields. Thanks for watching Agriculture Academy. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe and let us know in the comments what crops you're growing and how you manage your pH. Until next time, happy growing.